Welcome back to my channel, you guys. My name is Brianna Lentz. Today we are going to be going over how to use clip art image, a free image on the internet to create your own embroidered pillow and how to tea stain it. So let's get started. First, what you need to do is find what image you want to use on your embroidery. I'm using this simple pumpkin. I really liked the size and the layout of it. I will link this image down below and give credit to the person who designed it. Next, you will see me plugging in my light box. Uh, placing everything. Okay, great. My image isn't too large for my light box. I'm good to go. I will link down below the light box um, that I bought from Amazon. It's about $25. Basically, this cuts out me having to trace this onto tracing paper or having to then iron on a reverse image to my fabric. I'm going to be using a water, a wash away ink transfer marker. This is by Jan Lin. I bought it from Walmart. Um, I'm going to be using this in place of that iron on uh, pencil and this is really great to use all I have to do is go over the image onto my piece of muslin which is what I'm going to be embroidering on and it cuts away so many steps you guys and it, because I'm going to be tea staining this later it's just a wonderful trick to use if you're going to be tea staining the ink will dissipate will disappear with the water or the tea that I'm going to be using later and as you can see it's really easy to see the image it's bright and it has a nice contrast on the fabric I'm actually going to be embroidering through two pieces of fabric. One, I have a warm and natural batting that I'm going to be placing directly behind the muslin. And this is going to quilt the two pieces together as I embroider. So let's go ahead and get this in a hoop. Today I'm going to be using a 10 inch no slip hoop. These are awesome. They have a really thick hoop. So it really holds that batting and muslin together tightly with very little slip. It has a great grip on your fabric. You can see from the side how thick this is. Um, if you're a cross-stitcher, this is a great investment. You can buy these with a 40% off coupon at Hobby Lobby. You can get these at 123stitch.com. But I find that I really like using these for embroidery. I haven't learned how to embroider in hand. And since I am going to be quilting fabric as I embroider, this, this hoop has just been really great. The main focus when you are going to be placing your batting and muslin in your hoop is just to make sure that you don't have any ripples in the batting underneath. That's really the most important part of this whole step and that you have a nice tension that you want to work with. It might take you a couple tries and that's totally fine. Once you're satisfied with how your fabric is placed in your hoop, then you get to move on to choosing your colors. That's one of the big things that I love about embroidery is you get to just play with colors. Somebody doesn't have those colors charted for you, which sometimes can kind of mentally block you out of designing your own project. So I just went with a orange, uh, like a very primitive looking orange and a coordinating green. And I didn't record myself embroidering any of it, but here's a finished embroidery, which I'm really happy with. It didn't take much time. Um, it's a large piece, but I feel like having the simple lines was really effective and you can see that no slip hoop I didn't have to adjust it once it worked awesome again I cannot recommend this no slip hoop m more to a an embroiderer who doesn't embroider in hand So the next step really is prepping your surface for tea staining 
Um, I went ahead and ironed out my project a little bit, rolled my sleeves up, brewed my tea. I did, I think, three of the extra large Lipton tea bags of just like regular black tea um, and like maybe a cup of water. And I first used like a small brush to kind of try to, I guess, get more ink color, ink color, like more of the tea to be more of a darker ink around the design to give more emphasis and drama. In the end, it really didn't matter. It all saturated the fabric pretty much the same. Um, so if you just want to go over it all at once, you can do that too. But I kind of hyper focus on things so I can imagine myself doing this again, even knowing it doesn't have much of a result. But in my mind, I'm going to tell myself it does. But tea dyeing is so fun and to like purposely kind of alter your own embroidered project which typically you would want to keep perfect is really liberating it's kind of like Hermione when she's walking on the bridge being like it's fun to break the rules isn't it and Ron's like I think we've been a bad influence on her like I it's totally like that but anyway um I eventually just switch over to a big piece of paper towel and I just basically slob it all over the entire project and it's a much faster process and it's so pretty. Like I, I love it. I love the effect of tea dyeing. Oh, I just, it's so primitive looking. And then when it dries, it dries so differently. It's so fun. Now I did bake this in the oven at 200 degrees for like 10 minutes. I don't know if that's necessary or not, but that's what I did. One, I didn't want to wait for it to dry. And two, I just, I do that with my cross stitch fabric. So I thought I would do the same. I was a little bit nervous about the batting being in the oven, but it was fine. Like I watched it really closely. Um, so anyway, so that is totally done. And then I ironed everything out, which then means I am ready to completely finish this project. Uh, if you have not seen my how to fully finish your embroidery project into a pillow. I will link that down below as well as have the i card up here for you to go click on. It will take you through the steps you need to fully finish it. Okay, I thought before I sew this together that I would show you the back to show you how it's quilted to the batting. So this is the front. Okay. And because I placed backing behind it, it's quilted. So if you wanted to add this to a quilt, you totally could. Now, I don't know because I tea stained it and then I baked it that if you added it to a quilt at this point, it would probably shrink at a different rate than your unwashed fabric. But, um, you know, I don't know enough about that. But if you wanted to make it into a quilt hanging or something like that, this is already quilted. I, I think it's so, so cool. I love that. It's like magic. I also wanted to mention that all of the details um, that I will have linked down below will take you directly to my website, BriannaLens.com, and I will have the DMC, everything fully listed there. Um, and the homespun that I used was something that I had in stash, and really, I mean, this is an easy, easy finish, and it's so satisfying, and it's, if you have this in your stash already, then it's completely free. I will say that I did fill this with polyfill. You can't see that, but that is what I end up using and I just wanted to take you through what it looked like before I fully stuff it and then and then just like that I'm done I like it I stuffed it pretty good but I left it floppy because that's kind of how I like my pillows and I actually just fill it finish a couple more uh cross stitch pieces just like this, which you can go check out in my floss tube videos that I upload twice a month. I have a playlist. I will link that playlist down below. But I love this. I think it's really effective for my home. And you can create any embroidered project for yourself using images you find on the internet. Or don't forget, you can draw and draw one yourself. So thanks for tuning in, you guys. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you in the next project.